The problems with the Space Launch System project never seem to end. A month ago, NASA faced criticism for lack of transparency regarding escalated and uncontrolled costs for its moon rocket. But the trouble doesn't stop there. Another storm's arrived, knocking NASA down once more again. Recently, the Office of Inspector General released a comprehensive 35-page report analyzing NASA's mistakes as they attempted to justify the overall uncertainty of their world's most expensive space program, which arguably should have been eliminated a long time ago. Well, perhaps it's time for SLS to retire and make way for other projects like Starship. So, what exactly is the issue with NASA's SLS? Should NASA consider commercial alternatives to SLS? Stay tuned as we get into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. NASA's Artemis moon program is facing a challenging situation. Indeed, the crucial component of NASA's lunar exploration program, the Space Launch System, or SLS, is on the brink of instability and is likely to be replaced by other rockets. In report, NASA's Office of the Inspector General OID concluded a 50% reduction in SLS launch costs projected by NASA by moving to a services contract is highly unrealistic, with the vehicle's costs likely to remain above $2 billion for the foreseeable future. The main issue with the SLS rocket isn't its performance. Its first launch in the Artemis 1 mission at the end of 2022 was nearly flawless. But the problem is its exorbitant cost. Independent assessments of the vehicle requested by Congress over a decade ago discovered that NASA would find it challenging to sustain a deep space exploration program built around such a cost-heavy lift rocket. Delving into the report, it's not difficult to discern this high cost. The SLS rocket is equipped with four main engines derived from the space shuttle program. The cost of these four engines is $582.7 million, equivalent to a 146 million engine. This means that a single engine on NASA's rocket is nearly as expensive as the entire mission cost of the Falcon Heavy rocket, $178 million for the Europa Clipper space mission. That's why the report issued a warning that given the enormous cost of the Artemis campaign, it's crucial that NASA achieve some significant measure of its affordability goals. Failure to do so will significantly hinder the sustainability of NASA's deep space human exploration efforts. And to address the cost issue of the SLS, NASA has a plan in place. In July 2022, NASA expressed its intention to transition to a service contract called Exploration Production and Operations Contract, EPOC, for missions starting with Artemis V at the end of the 2020s. That contract would be with Deep Space Transport, a joint venture of Boeing and Northrop Grumman, two major contractors for elements of the rocket. With a desire to rapidly reduce the cost of the SLS, they are seeking an opportunity for substantial savings of 50% or more off the current industry baseline per flight cost through this EPOC contract. That report estimates the Block 1B version of SLS to be used starting with Artemis IV will initially cost $2.5 billion a flight. A 50% reduction under EPOC would mean the SLS costs could be reduced by $1.25 billion each. EPOC can also help SLS open the door to using SLS for missions other than the Artemis lunar exploration flights, including non-NASA customers. Initially, it seemed like this was an option by NASA that would help them save the SLS, but according to the OIG report, NASA's cost-saving approach may not be as effective. Furthermore, the report provides convincing factors that NASA's main reasons for cost reduction appear to be based on magical and wishful thinking. While Boeing officials told us they believe the 50% cost reduction goal under EPOC is achievable, based on our audit, we find such a goal infeasible. Boeing, responsible for constructing the core stages of the SLS rocket, encompassing propellant tanks and four main engines, experienced only a marginal 13% reduction in its workforce during the transition from the initial to the second core stage. In particular, in the report it is written, Boeing historically has increased costs under their contracts. Although the cost for each engine is not excessively high at nearly $150 million an engine, the report's analysis entirely dismisses the prospect of reducing the cost of SLS. Next, the report suggests that the cost of future engines is poised to rise. Despite efforts to enhance manufacturing efficiency through 3D printing and the use of more cost-effective materials for RS-25 engines beyond Artemis 7, the report identifies potential cost increases for future engines. Additionally, the OIG also notes that there is no incentive for deep space transport to lower its prices. This agency has not committed to transitioning to a fixed-price contract and has allowed Boeing to incorporate restricted rights data into the core stage design. In other words, no one else can manufacture the SLS rocket, so if the space agency wants to continue purchasing them, it has to do so from Boeing and Northrop. This story indeed mirrors a similar tale from the past, raising questions about the possibility of history repeating itself.
Do you still remember that in the mid-1990s, NASA opted for a significant change by transitioning space shuttle production from internal agency management to an external commercial services contract with the primary aim of achieving cost savings? At that time, Boeing and Lockheed Martin collaborated to establish a novel entity, United Space Alliance, to provide shuttle services on a sole source basis to NASA, similar to what will be done with the SLS rocket. However, the anticipated cost reductions did not materialize. Following the shift of shuttle production and operational responsibilities from NASA managed contracts to commercial service contracts, space shuttle operations costs experienced an unfortunate surge, estimated at approximately 38%, ultimately reaching a substantial $1.45 billion a launch. Finally, the OIG has yielded a conclusion. The cost of the SLS is anticipated to persist at over $2 billion per vehicle for the initial 10 launches under the EPOC contract. Additionally, the extent of potential cost savings is contingent upon the approach taken, whether fixed price or cost plus in the execution of the EPOC contract. They didn't forget to provide some recommendations for NASA. Perhaps most notably, the Inspector General suggests that NASA explore the use of alternative vehicles to replace the SLS rocket for future Artemis missions. Although SLS is currently the only vehicle capable of launching the Orion spacecraft, that may not always be the case. However, in the next three to five years, other human-rated commercial alternatives may become available, it stated. In our judgment, the agency should continue to monitor the commercial development of heavy-lift spaceflight systems and begin discussions of whether it makes financial and strategic sense to consider these options as part of the agency's longer-term plans to support its ambitious space exploration goals. One notable contender in this commercial landscape is SpaceX's Starship. Recognized as a potential game-changer, Starship has emerged as a human-rated alternative with the promise of offering not just a competitive edge, but also enhanced efficiency and cost-effectiveness. The OIG acknowledges Starship as a noteworthy candidate that could potentially reshape the trajectory of space exploration, providing a reliable and cost-efficient alternative to the traditional SLS model. Additionally, vehicles are being developed by Blue Origin and ULA that could serve as alternatives to the SLS for medium and heavy lift launches. However, to be frank, SpaceX remains the most promising candidate for this position, primarily considering the speed of development and the dominance it holds in all aspects. What are your thoughts on this? Comment below and let us know what you think. In summary, the report from NASA's OIG has illuminated the challenges and complexities surrounding the development of the SLS. Alongside NASA's proactive efforts to reduce costs, it's somewhat disheartening to see a lack of clear assurance from NASA and rather an acknowledgement of the uncertain future of the SLS. There are potentially more candidates to replace the leading role of the SLS, with SpaceX's Starship being a standout contender. This spaceship is poised to be a game-changer in the space exploration industry. As for the future of the SLS program, it remains uncertain. It could either be phased out or continue to persist. Regardless, the likelihood of reducing the overall program cost seems improbable. That's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Your feedback's very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.